Hey everyone, welcome back. In the next few tutorials, we're going to be implementing some power-ups. Now, most of these are going to be changes to the existing guns, so we're going to add, for example, two bullets, three bullets, four and eight. And we'll also be introducing a totally different kind of weapon, a laser. And we are also going to be introducing this shield kind of power-up that makes the player invincible for a few seconds. So like I said, these four can probably use the existing bullet system, we're just creating more bullets, but the laser will have to be a new object and we will have to introduce this invincibility into the player. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drag in the new sprites and also a sound effect for the laser. There we go, and I'm going to center the power-ups, and that collision mask is going to be fine. Now, the order of the frames that I have right here is actually kind of going to be important, because I'm actually going to use these as their kind of power-up indexes. So this one right here in the first frame will be power-up number zero, one, two, three, four, five. So kind of like what we were doing with the factions, creating an enumerator to represent the neutral ally and enemy factions, we're going to be doing a similar thing with the power-ups, creating an enumerator to represent all of these. Now the second bit of setup is this sprite right here, and this is what I'm going to draw over the player when they have one of these power-ups. And you can see they kind of correspond to the power-ups. The first frame will be guns that will be added to the ship. Two guns, three, four, eight. The laser and the shield that will go around the player's ship. So these will kind of be stuck onto the existing uh, player ship that we've got. All right, so just make sure it's centered in the middle center and we can get started. So actually, let's just create first the new power up object so we can wrap our head around what's going to be happening. So I'm going to call this OBJ power up. And we're going to assign the sprite to this one. Now, when this gets created, I want it to randomly select one of those frames right here. So one of these six frames. And we can do that right here in the create event. So if you want, we can describe this as choose frame. And so, of course, the frame is the image index. And we can use a random function to make it randomly select a frame. And I want it to select a whole number or an integer. So I'm using I random range instead of just random range, which is decimals. And let's have a think. So zero, that's the first frame. And then what's going to be the number? So we could just plug in six or rather five because uh, it will go from zero to five. We have to remember that the indexes start at zero. But if you ever wanted to change that, maybe you've got uh, a power-up sprite that has more frames than that. If we want to do this in a more general way, what we can do is actually get the existing image number. That will return how many frames there are. So this will return six. There is currently six frames. But like I just said, we have to subtract one from that. And then that will go from zero to five. All right. Now, another thing I want these power-ups to do is... I only want them to stick around in the game world for a few seconds. They're basically just going to be created by asteroids and maybe the ships when they get destroyed. But I don't want them to stick around forever. I want it to be kind of challenging to pick these up. So I want them to destroy themselves after five seconds. So we can use an alarm for this. So I'm just going to use alarm zero. And I can just set this to destroy self. Instance destroy. All right, and we just have to set that alarm. So like I said, five seconds, but we can't just put five. We have to times that by the room speed because this number is the number of frames, not the number of seconds. All right, so five times 60, that will get us the right number. And now I could keep this uh, white at the moment, but I think that might blend in with the asteroids a bit. So I might just tint it uh, kind of like what we've been doing with the enemies and the allies. Now that we've got a more colorful world, I might make the image blend lime, so green. Of course, I could just um, recolor it in the sprite itself, but this allows us to kind of customize it on the fly. And the very last thing I want to do is, like 
uh, the conventional way to use frames is to make an animation. So right now, regardless of what frame it chooses at the start, it's still going to continue cycling through them and animating. We don't actually want them to animate. I want it to remain whatever power-up it chooses. Because when the player actually collides with a power-up and picks it up, I'm going to use the frame as the reference for what power-up to give the player. So we have to stop it animating. So let's set image speed to zero. All right, cool. So that is the power-ups set up. Now, we still have a bit of work to do. So we have to set up the collision in the player object to pick up the power-ups. And I also just wanted to set up the enumerator, like I said, to index the frames, because while we can kind of remember which one's which, you might not remember what like frame five is. So let's go ahead, go to game objects, because we don't want this enumerator being declared in multiple places and the game object only gets created once. And let's call this power-ups. All right, so I'm gonna call this two bullets, three bullets, four bullets, star bullets, because it's gonna make a kind of star shape as it shoots out and laser bullets, or I could just call it laser, whatever you want. And finally, invincible. And you'll see that those correspond to the pictures in the frames. All right, while we're in the game object, I might also just disable the enemy ships just to give us a little bit more space to practice um, picking up the power-ups without being interfered with by the enemies. All right, and now we can head over to the player object. So we're going to need to set up a collision event with the power-ups. At the moment, this is kind of going to be a unique collision that only the player has. I don't think I would want other allies to be able to pick up the power-ups. Maybe that's something cool that could be done in the future, but for now, this is unique to the player. So it only goes here, not in the faction parents or anything. And I don't think we need a description. It's fairly self-explanatory. We're colliding with the power-up and we're gonna set what power-up that we're getting. So let's check, first of all, we need to get what image index the power up is. Cause remember that image index is going to perfectly correspond to the power ups in the enumerator. So I'm going to save its image index in a new variable called power up type. I know that once we've collided with the power up, we can destroy it. And depending on what the power up type is, we want to do different things. I'm going to be altering the player's guns. So in the case, for example, that it's equal to powerups.invincible, we know that we want to set the player to be invincible. And then in all the other cases, in fact, I might just set this as a default. So otherwise, we're going to change the player's guns. So. With this one, we might set up some new variables in the player. So I'm going to set up guns equals, I'll just set this to minus one at the moment to mean we don't have any special guns selected and invincible is going to be false. So we can come back here now and we can set invincible to be true when this happens. And in the case of this, let's set the guns to whatever the power up type is because that is the type of guns that we want to be creating over here in the create bullet. Now, one last bit of setup before we actually start altering the guns or anything is I want a way for turning this off, for basically resetting the invincible and the guns. I don't want the player to keep the power-ups forever. That might be something cool again. It might be a way that the player actually picks up and modifies their ship. But I'm going to just make a timer where these will only last for a number of seconds. And I do want these to be separate. I want the player to be able to be invincible while having a gun power up as well. So I'm going to separate these. I'll set two different alarms to reset these variables back to false or back to their defaults. So let's make alarm zero. Reset guns where we can just set guns back to minus one. 
And by the way, I have chosen minus one just to be the default because zero is actually the first entry in this. So zero corresponds to two bullets. So we do need something that's not a number from zero or an integer starting from zero. So that's why I've chosen minus one. And for the invincible, reset invincible equals false. Okay, so in here we also just need to set the alarms. So you can set these to, whoops, wrong one, whatever you want. I might make the invincible last a bit longer than the guns will, so I'm gonna say eight seconds. And the guns will last, let's do five. All right, great. Now let's just do the invincible mechanic first because we kind of have all of the architecture set up already. So in the collisions, all we have to do, and we even left a comment here last time, is check if we're currently invincible. So we could just say exit, which means we're not going to actually destroy ourselves or take any damage. Later on, we could change this to change health or something. But this was the code that we had set for taking damage. So we're going to negate that if we're invincible. And the other thing that we will want to modify is our collisions with other objects. So right now, if we were colliding with something that's not part of our faction, we were damaging the player's ship. So in here as well, I'm going to add another if check. So if, in fact, I can say else if, we are invincible, then what I actually might do is hurt the other ship that we're colliding with. So the invincibility is kind of acting as a weapon for the player. So when they collide now with asteroids and enemy ships while being invincible, we're going to damage the other ships. So let's go with other, so with whoever we're colliding with. And we already know that it can't be a member of our faction because we're exiting right here. In this case, let's get them to perform, in fact, it's gonna be the same as this, their take damage scripts. And then afterwards we can just exit, we don't wanna perform this. All right, so for a test, how about we put in an OBJ power-up right into the room? In a second, we might just get it to spawn from asteroids, but I just wanna test that this will work. And I'm going to, so that I can test this one, come back to the power-up objects, and just overwrite this and say, set it to the invincible one, right? So it's gonna overwrite that one. We know it will be invincible. Let's run the game. Give that a test. There we go. So it is appearing lime like we want and it is appearing as the invincible. And I forgot that we had set the alarm, but it's good that the alarm is working. Let me just rerun that. All right. So we got the invincible. Let's see if we can quickly find an asteroid. There we go. So we are not dying when we collide into an asteroid. But it's not clear right now when we are invincible or not. So let's overlay the invincibility sprite that I'd created. So this one right here, I said that I wanted to draw these over the top of the player if we currently had any of those. So let's go to the ship. Let's come over to the draw. Event, so we're gonna add a new event, draw, and we're gonna change the way the player is currently drawing itself. By default, if we wanted to keep normal drawing behavior, we put draw self, then the player will draw itself normally. And we also wanna draw something on top of the player now. So if it has guns, then we wanna draw the guns. And if it's invincible, then I wanna draw the invincibility. So I need to check if guns does not equal minus one, then we're gonna draw a sprite over the top. The sprite that we're gonna draw is called SPR ship power-ups. Now the sub image, so the frame, is going to be whatever guns is equal to, because again, we know that it kind of corresponds to the frame. I've laid everything out using the exact same order the same order as in the enumerator, right here. So we know which one to draw over the top. Let's head back to play up. So we can put in guns 
and we want to draw it at the x and y of the player. Now, it is important to note that this function right here doesn't draw a sprite with scale or blending or the rotation unless we tell it to. So if we want it to rotate in the same way that the player is rotating, we actually have to use an extended version of this function. And we have to plug in all of these arguments. So let's put in the image x scale of the player, image y scale, the angle for the rotation, the blend. So now it should also draw the guns to be the same blend of the player, so that should be aqua. And finally, the alpha, image alpha. So these are all the kind of default settings. It's going to match whatever the player currently is. We want to do the same for invincible, except we're checking if invincible. So if this is true, then we will draw the power-ups again, but we don't want guns. We actually know that we just want to draw the invincible power-up. So I can use the enumerator for this. Just like that. So let's give that a test. We can't test the guns yet, but we should be able to see the invincible come up. There we go. All right. Perfect. Now, as you can see, it's a little sudden when the invincibility gets turned off. We can't really judge. We, the player, can't judge when we're kind of running out of time. So I might modify one of these arguments. I might just do this over multiple lines so we can see what we're doing. So right now, according to this function, we're drawing it at the same alpha as the player, but what I might do is get it to fade when we have one second left. And we actually already do have a kind of counter variable set up that we can access to know how much time we've got left. And that is the alarm. So remember, we set the alarm to go off after eight seconds. We can actually check what alarm one is currently equal to by using this right here. So I'm going to declare a temporary variable. And we're going to use this in place of image alpha. Now, what I want it to do is basically be one for the first seven seconds. And then basically when alarm one is 60 or less, right? Because that is one second. So when this value is less than 60, I want alpha to get lower. So what I can do is use a couple handy math functions. So I'm going to use the minimum of one or alarm one over 60 because one is maximum alpha, that's no transparency, it's fully opaque. And then once this gets to below 60, that will be lower than one. So it will start using this value right here and it's going to get closer and closer to zero. So we're going to slowly fade out. So if we test that again. And just move around for a bit. So you can see there it's slowly faded out. So it gave us more time to kind of know that we were running out of invincibility and it gives the player some time to react and not try and smash into the asteroid. All right, so that is a really handy tool when you're counting down for things. You might do something similar for the guns, maybe flash or something when they're running out. So we'll move on and actually code in those gun power-ups in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.